Hey guys, what's going on? This is a full race tubular equal length manifold. To be quite honest with you, I'm not even sure if it's exactly equal length because cylinder four looks a little bit shorter than the others. But either way, this is a highly, really highly rated exhaust manifold and it should improve the flow and the turbo spool and it's got a lifetime warranty on it. So you know what? I am super excited to install this. Like if you look at how nicely, you know, smoothed out these runners are, super nice. If you look inside there, really, really nice piece. So uh, we're gonna install it. So the first step is to uh, walk over to the car. So guys, this is a uh, CPE catless downpipe. And when we put everything back together after putting the uh, full race turbo manifold on, we're gonna put this one in and take the C and T catted downpipe out. So this is gonna improve the flow. This one here also has a lifetime warranty. And it's got a nice cast uh, bell mouth housing here. It's got uh, three O2 sensor bungs. In the advertising though online, it only shows two. So I don't know why I have three here, but luckily I have an, ex an extra plug from the uh, C&T downpipe to cover one of these holes up. And it also came with a, a plug as well. It's got a really good flex joint here. Just a really nice piece, just ceramic coated. So we're gonna put this in at the end. First step here is to uh, remove your top mount intercooler and or your hot pipe for your front mount intercooler setup just so we can get some access. And then we're gonna remove the heat shield and just slowly start taking things apart. Okay, so I've just removed the hot pipe coming off the turbo for the front mount intercooler by loosening the T-bolt clamps. Now I'm gonna take the heat shield off by removing all of these eight millimeter bolts. Okay, so I've removed the heat shield now and now I'm gonna remove the bottom heat shield right there on the bottom of the in, uh, stock exhaust manifold. The car is still hot, so I gotta be careful here. Might be better just to wait for it to cool down, but we can't wait to get more boost, so. We're just gonna go ahead and risk burning ourselves. So now that we got that heat shield off, if you look inside here, might be hard to see, but right down in there, there's a little eight millimeter bolt. That eight millimeter bolt needs to be removed because it's holding the bracket to the oil feed line to the turbo. So we gotta remove that eight millimeter bolt. I've loosened that bracket, the oil feed line is now free. Now this shield here has to be removed as well. Because in order to take the exhaust manifold off, we have to lower the turbo down. Basically, we got to take the intake out as well. We got to take, we basically have to disconnect a lot of things because the turbo pretty much has to be dropped completely. We also have to disconnect or, or uh, separate the downpipe from the actual turbo itself. So we're just going to take it in steps by starting off by removing the shield here. Eight millimeter bolts. Might help to spray some penetrating fluid on these bolts. Oh yeah, I don't like these bolts. They're too small and they're hard to take off sometimes. I gotta get a new set of bolts. These ones have been removed so many times. If you guys have been following our videos, we do a lot of work on this car. And the end goal is just to have better performance, but not necessarily the highest horsepower numbers. We just want the car to run efficiently and reliably. So we're just doing all the things that are common, common issues. The exhaust manifold being one, doesn't flow evenly. Intake manifold being one, doesn't flow evenly. We're just trying to slowly make the car a better thing. And we want to share our experience with you guys. Basically, we're doing a turbo install all over again because why not? No, I'm kidding. You're not kidding, this is exactly what we're doing. We're I know. The turbo out, putting it in. Yeah, we'll take the turbo yeah, out, why not? put a different turbo back in. Yeah, we'll, we'll just put a bigger turbo in like a uh, 6266. Do it. Precision turbo 6266, you know, we'll put the, push the stock block to about, you know, 800 horsepower and see how long it lasts. Just kidding. It's my daily driver and I'm not rich. Probably last, uh, what, halfway through the first pull? You never know, really. Tune by Nishan took his up to like 520. Before he built someone it. who knows what they're doing and we're not that. Yeah, you know, I'll be happy with 400 at the wheels. I don't really track the car too much, so I'd be just for the street. And the thing with these cars is, if you're running a lot of power on the stock block, the trick is, have a good tune. Uh, make sure you're running a safe tune, obviously. And don't do back-to-back -back pulls because what tends to go on these is the ring lens. So even if your tune is super good and right on point, um, too much heat from back-to-back -back runs can actually crack the ring lens because the piston ring end gaps are very tight on the stock engine. So the piston rings will butt together and push down and crack the ring lens. Just to make a little bit more room, I'm gonna take the uh, back heat shield off here by 
untwisting these two green screw-on nuts. Okay, so now we're gonna take the intake out because we gotta lower the turbo down. We're hoping to try to keep the battery and the ECU in place because we don't really wanna touch it because we're kind of lazy. And now I'm gonna take off this breather line. This is the new Gen 2 valve cover and the Speed Performance breather cap. This is a lot of fun. I'm having fun. You having fun? Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> oh man, that was weak. That's what counts. I feel weak. Well, you do have a bit of an infection going on there, buddy. <coughs> Come on out. <laughs> okay, it's in the snowblower. That thing flew out. There it is. Wow, that was like a projectile. We just gotta be patient and everything will work itself out. See? We managed to get the intake out in a stress-free manner. That's all it takes, ladies and gentlemen. Staying calm and sober. It's a three inch HTP intake, so I had to buy a three inch to three and a half inch coupler because the inlet on the BNR is four is three and a half inches. Coupler's a bit beat up, buddy. Yeah, well I had, to, since it curves, I had to cut it as a little bit of an arch just so I could bend the intake in the correct orientation with the proper clamping force from the T-bolt clamp. But it works, you know? It does the job, eh? It does the- unmetered air going in. No, my fuel trims are good. I don't have any check engine lights. Fine. I think what we need to do first yeah. is actually do the downpipe. We're gonna take the downpipe out first. So we gotta raise the car now, put it on jack stands, and uh, crawl underneath and start doing the job. We're gonna remove the O2 sensor now. This here is a 7 8 O2 sensor socket. Now we're just gonna use an ex a couple extensions on there to get inside. To get some more leverage, we're gonna put this little bar on top of it here. Make sure it's nice and flat, because we do not wanna strip the O2 sensor. There we go. There's the uh, wideband O2 sensor that we've untwisted and removed. We're gonna put it to the side. Okay, downpipe bolts. Let's jack up the car. How are we doing on that downpipe? I made it loud alive. So the uh, exhaust cutout, that's not going back in there. No, it is the, not. I'm not gonna lie, the race line cutout's a good cutout. It's a good quality cutout, but uh, I've just outgrown excessive noise. It looked like the same size bell mouths. Kind of like the uh, the wider profile on the mouth there. Yeah, this has a little bit of a wider profile. But uh, I don't think that's gonna make too much of a difference. I think what's gonna make a difference mm -hmm. is the fact that it's catless. That is gonna make a difference. Right there's your flow restriction. Basically, it's... Uh, only for off-road use. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're gonna lower the turbo now. We're gonna basically disconnect the coolant lines, disconnect the oil return and oil feed. And then we're gonna loosen the top bolts here, or the top nuts. We're gonna lower the turbo down, which will allow us to get to some of the nuts below here holding the manifold. So we used a pair of vice grips kind of like these on the return line of the coolant. Just to try and save some coolant, we pinched it off. And we're gonna do the same for the coolant feed line, just to pinch the, the hose off so we don't actually waste any coolant. So, but first, before I do that, I'm just gonna try to get it a little bit loose so I'm not struggling with the clamp in my way. And then once, once I'm able to pull it off completely, before I actually go and pull it off, I'll clamp the line down and prevent coolant loss. Below here, you can see, I can see the light. You can see the vice grip that we have on the bottom coolant return line. That's pinching off the bottom return line going into the block. That's protecting nothing. It is stopping coolant from flowing out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I keep defaulting to saying protecting. <clears throat> and now we're gonna loosen the oil return line and remove it. This is the oil return line right here. Right there. Okay, so it's eight millimeter bolts. Eight millimeters. So get me an eight with a small extension. Like a quarter inch. Right. We get some seepage, but it shouldn't be a lot. Most of the oil is in the block right now, in the pan. Now, as you can see, there's the oil return line. I'm disconnect. I'm loosening those two eight millimeter bolts. Now I'm going to loosen those, and then we are going to loosen that bracket right there. Disconnect that bolt, that bolt, and that bolt. As you can see, there's the vice grip right there, pinching the coolant line so we don't lose any coolant. And then we'll loosen up the oil feed line up top, and uh, the turbo will be ready to be lowered so we can loosen the exhaust manifold nuts that are behind the turbo. EGR has been removed. Not EGR, oil return. <laughs> oil return has been removed, it is right here. Hey Eric, they say ignorance is bliss. 
Ignorance is bliss. Like you have no idea the kind of danger your car is in right now. Why? You know how you have a brand new valve cover you're really proud of and a breather cap? Yeah. Don't shake anything. What? What are you talking about? Uh, you'll see the footage later. Don't shake anything. Nothing, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. No, seriously, seriously. Yeah, that's fine. Is there a leak? Nope. Eric's holding the turbo up. I'm gonna loosen the last nut that's holding the turbo on, those four nuts like that. And then we can drop the turbo down, set it down gently on the subframe, and then we can get to the lower bolts on the exhaust manifold. Hold on, hold on, we forgot to uh, disconnect the oil feed line. All right, so as you can see down there, the turbo has been released from its position and is now resting on the subframe. This is going to allow us to remove the nuts that were being blocked by the turbo on the exhaust manifold. So what's coming off is basically this heat shield right here that's protecting the alternator from the exhaust manifold. Okay. Sorry about the shield there. It's a little air duct. Scoops up some air to cool down the alternator as you're driving. And these are the two tens. Yeah, so one ten goes here. And there's another one that goes down here. Huh. Exhaust manifold is missing. I wonder where it could be. Oh, look at that. So that thing is going to be interesting. It's a nice piece, that's for sure. This is going to be a little bit tricky. I don't know if we have to remove this or not, but... Might be easier to remove this bracket there. Yeah, I think we should remove that bracket. <laughs> Super tight. Superman. Super tight. Do we do it together? Right. Superman, super tech. Works out perfectly. <sighs> Just priding myself off this car. So how are you guys doing? You enjoying the video so far? I hope you are. I'm enjoying myself. Putting a new manifold in here, it's gonna be great. It's gonna sound different. I like the gargle, but I do like performance as well. I'm pretty excited to see if the manifold is gonna give us more, more top end. I've done some reading and that's usually where it shines, at the top end high RPMs, but I've also read that it aids in spool. This looks like it's out of the way now. Plenty of room now. Now we can pop this Manny in. Exhaust manifold gasket is in place, perfect. Maybe this thing doesn't fit. <laughs> it's a little bit tight, but nothing we can't handle. Heavy though. It's pretty heavy. Huh. That sits lower than I thought it would. Oh, okay. All right. Now we just got to start putting the nuts on, tighten everything down. Even if I did take this thing to the drag strip and I had a nice tune, my driving skills are not the greatest. But we do plan on getting a um, installing a watt box for flat foot shifting. Um, and at some point we're gonna set up the uh, six part system from speed performance to get some more fuel so we can actually take advantage of the turbo. But for a little while, you know, we'll just, we'll get the setup dialed in, slowly putting parts in. So this manifold is a nice piece to this engine bay. I gotta say, it looks really nice. We ended up uh, removing the engine lift point that was over here, the black little loop, because uh, it was kind of running into one of the welds over there. Okay, exhaust manifold's tightened. All that's left is to bring the turbo up, connect all the lines on the turbo, put the downpipe fabric back on. All right, so the downpipe is now going back in. We've got all of the oil return, oil feed, coolant feed, coolant return lines hooked up. Everything's tight, we got the bracket from the turbo to the block tightened down. Everything is ready for the downpipe, so let's do it. conservative map just running straight pump gas uh, really low ignition timing and zero wastegate duty cycle
I gotta get a new set of bolts. <laughs>